In today's video, we're going to take a look at some NHL news and rumors, including a TSN article which suggests five different teams that Sidney Crosby could be traded to if he does not re-sign in Pittsburgh. We'll discuss that scenario. Plus, we have another PTO in Toronto. We have some speculation around the contract negotiations of Bruins goalie Jeremy Swayman. Predictions over the next Connor McDavid contract is going to land. We have comments as well from Tory Krug and a big change for Cole Caulfield going into next year. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumor items to take a look at here today. I want to start first with another item that's kind of connected to the unfortunate, tragic passing of Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, NHL player for the Montreal Canadiens, Cole Caulfield, has made an announcement, uh, quite a you know tribute as well, um, that he's changing his number to 13 uh, to honor his hero, Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, Caulfield's lengthy post uh, kind of goes through and outlines the fact that as much as he's enjoyed wearing the number 22 uh, for the Montreal Canadiens and he's had a lot of great memories with it that at one point uh, earlier in his hockey life he did wear number 13 uh, because he looked up so much to Johnny Hockey being one of the trailblazers for being a smaller skilled player who proved that not only could they make the NHL but a guy like Johnny could, you know, excel and be one of the league's top players. And Cole Caulfield's following, you know, quite nicely in his footsteps and becoming quite a player in his own right. You know, and like I said, refer to him as his hero. So I know, uh, um, you know, sometimes for players, a change of their numbers is a big deal. A lot of players are very attached to their number. Um, but for Caulfield to do this to honor Johnny, I think is quite a an honor and a humbling thing. So certainly uh, look for some new Cole Caulfield, number 13 Montreal Canadian jerseys for the upcoming uh, NHL season. As I mentioned, we did get some comments today from the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, on the tragic passing of Johnny Gaudreau. Some of the players, uh, you know, Boone Jenner uh, were, were Wierenski, um, Gabranson, I think a few others uh, spoke today. Um, nothing too in-depth, and they didn't take questions, um, but certainly just kind of expressing their, um, you know, uh, their thoughts on Johnny and the, the family, you know, all that. Just kind of your, your basic remarks, but certainly, you know, the whole team is going to travel uh, for uh, the funeral, whatever that may be. They said they're still kind of waiting for the, the lead from the family to kind of, obviously complete all those um, arrangements and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, the, the Columbus Blue Jackets will go as a team um, to pay their respects and attend the service for uh, Johnny and Matty Gaudreau. So I'm sure it's going to be, you know, an event that uh, lots of NHL, um, you know, players and people that work in the league are uh, going to want to attend, obviously, like I said, because he was one of those people that uh, just touched a lot of people, had a lot of friends. Um, and just, you know, they're just such a well-liked family. So uh, certainly we'll wait and see more details on when all that is going to take place. Uh, we had an event today in Ottawa. Again, the ownership group there trying to really connect with its fan base and with a lot of the different community members that are important. And today they had an event uh, for media and for they invited a lot of like online social media people, uh, social influencers, if you will. Uh, a lot of their top you know people in the Sens Twitter community, uh, um, some of which are more kind of you know like younger journalists that are up and coming. Some of them are just more influencers because of their big following and that they you know talk a lot about the team or big fans and all that so they had lots of people in attendance uh made lots of uh different announcements um a lot of which were pretty you know fairly small when it comes to tickets and all that uh one really unique thing that they announced today uh was the sends announced that they've entered into a partnership with a local LG, lpga golfer brooke henderson now brooke henderson of course you know grew up in the Ottawa area, she played hockey herself. Uh, you know, um, obviously golf became her passion and became her sport that she's playing now at a professional level. Certainly, you know, a great golfer who's reached tons of success. Um, I know they've, uh, I think they've worked with her a little bit before and they've had her at games and whatnot. But uh, this partnership is going to basically allow um, her, I guess, to kind of promote the Sens more at the different golf tournaments and events that she's going to attend. It sounds like she's going to be given a bunch of stuff to, uh, you know, when it comes to like towels, water bottles, uh, you know, shirts, all that kind of stuff. And her caddy, who I believe is also her sister, uh, is going to be dressed in Sens colors, I think, for at least one round or something every tournament, I believe it was. So it's a very interesting, unique 
partnership that you don't really see among sports teams being, uh, you know, in partnership with another, you know, local pro athlete in the area. So, uh, unique thing. Obviously, they're going to try to, um, you know, use her reach with a different. Um, fan base try to grow the game uh they did confirm as well that over 90 percent of their season ticket holders from last year have renewed but they're still trying to boost that number up here even more they're trying to make a lot of other concessions uh improvements and there's lots of new food items going to be available in the arena so they're really trying to invest more into the fan experience at the end of the day that's really what it's all about uh most of the teams already in uh in town and uh, skating together and training together and wanting to get a head start on uh things even earlier this year now that a lot of them are commenting on how that this year there's no distractions like you know the ownership stuff is all settled there's no contracts that are outstanding it's just focused on playing you know they made lots of new additions lots of veterans coming in and they certainly made changes for the purpose with everybody that came in came in either as like a top on her field like Linus Allmark of course who was you know former Vezina Trophy winner and everybody else besides Allmark were a former recent Stanley Cup champion so they certainly wanted to add a lot of experience and leadership and whatnot and hopefully that their their goal is to certainly have a much better year uh, speaking of Linus Allmark he was there today he uh, came out and spoke to the uh uh, the group that was present uh, by in, on the guests of the Senators today. Uh, and Steve Steos, the GM, did also uh, comment because he was asked about a contract extension for Allmark. I know some people were commenting on Twitter the fact that Allmark was scheduled to speak and Steos was going to speak. They wondered if maybe there'd be an announcement around a contract extension. I'm like, no, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. That seems like a Pierre Dorian thing to do, but not necessarily a Steve Steos thing. Um, but he did comment on Allmark saying that, you know, They've, they've had it sounds like they've had some conversations but at the end of the day uh, Steos doesn't feel like they really need to rush here that he said he wants Allmark to get completely comfortable with the city with the group and everything before they really get into serious conversations uh, so that's why I said based on the choice of words I think it's fair to say they've had some talks uh, Allmark's been in Ottawa now for a couple of weeks I think and seems like he's settling in quite nicely he's very well spoken and uh, certainly seemed like there's interest for sure to to stay but i honestly think it's fine for them you know kind of take a test drive if you will make sure it's the great fit that you think it's going to be before you really get too deep down that road so lots of great stuff from the senators today and like nice to see them involving a lot of the social influencers that uh you know at different events as well so uh, i know a whole different approach from this ownership group compared to the last one and it certainly is a breath of fresh air when it comes to their downtown arena uh serial leader the team president did provide a couple other quick updates there and it sounds like in the past few days they've made some progress on some of the concessions they're hoping to get the ncc to make to reach a an agreement here with them uh september 20th is a pretty hard deadline uh to get an agreement in place on a lease to move forward with the new arena down there um and there was a number i know last uh, i think maybe four or five days ago uh we talked about this recently there was a number of items that the sens were not happy about and that they were trying to make progress to get in the ncc to kind of you know give a little bit and they sound like they've been able to budge on some of those items at the very least but negotiations will continue so there's a little bit more optimism than there was maybe last week and uh, we'll see the ncc did have i noticed that an article in the ottawa sun that uh one of the comments from the ncc was that they want to kind of you know do whatever they got to do so to speak to make it work for the senators it sounds like they're eager to get a deal done so that could prove to be good news for them but we'll see uh, obviously uh lots of things there to overcome that we talked about the last time we touched on that subject uh, a couple other quick things as well which i forgot to mention yesterday the toronto maple leafs have signed uh former stanley cup champion florida panther stephen lorenz uh he gets a pto so he'll be another you know active participant in training camp that'll be vying for a job on the fourth line uh stephen lawrence is a player that can be uh you know he's got a good experience obviously being on the cup champion florida panthers last year played with Carolina before that so like he's he's been on some good teams uh, so he's certainly been around a lot of good leaders uh, he's a great skater and can certainly be a useful bottom six guy so uh, with what the Leafs have there for competition it wouldn't be shocking if he earned himself a contract so we'll see how that works out um tory krug we talked about in the last day or so that uh, he was unfortunately going to miss the entire 
24-25 campaign due to uh, needing ankle surgery. And it was going to be a long recovery. Well, he did speak to St. Louis Blues reporters today. Um, and he got to get a little bit more details on what happened, how this all came about. I mean, I, I'd heard reports that he's been dealing with a bad ankle slash foot for some time, but never really knew what happened. Apparently, he fractured his ankle with the Boston Bruins six years ago in their playoff run that year. Um, and it's continually gotten worse ever since. Like, it sounds like he opted to not, I, mean, I don't know for sure because he didn't say, but could have been one of those scenarios where it's like, well, you could have surgery, but you can probably, you know, kind of let it heal and maybe play through it. And that's what he, the approach he took. Um, and it's just continually gotten worse. And it's gotten worse to the point where even training is a major thing that he can't do. Uh, he even said there's some days he can't even pick up his kids um you know so from day to day it's it's not even at a point now where uh you're thinking about playing hockey uh you know he can't even train to be in shape to play hockey and then it's affecting his personal life and his ability to to play with his young children and everything so certainly important that uh, he'll have to get this looked after um you know and if he obviously missing the season is going to be you know emotionally and mentally tough on him i'm sure you could see he was visibly very upset and kind of shook on the ear that this was going to be the case but at the same time he could also get a, a sense of relief that it's going to finally be fixed and looked after and then hopefully he can come back and be um you know strong like he was before because obviously this is something that's been ongoing for a long time and probably should have been looked after a long, long time ago. Now, of course, with Leon Dreisaitl's extension coming through yesterday, there's been lots of talk, speculation, whatever you want to call it, around what's McDavid's number going to look like when he gets his new deal. I mean, clearly, uh, I know there's uh, a lot of people out there, especially Leaf fans that are wanting to play uh, – you know, uh, troll here and say that he's probably going to end up as a Maple Leaf when his contract expires. I don't see that happen, and I'm pretty sure McDavid will be an order for life. They've done everything in their power to surround him with as many influential people that he's got great relationships with there in Edmonton, and of course, keeping his you know close friends and top you know caliber teammates like Drysaddle and Bouchard will go a long way to making sure that there's no hiccups along the way but uh, Frank Zero Valley uh, NHL insider for dailyfaceoff.com um, made some comments speculating on where McDavid's next contract could go because you got to remember we're still a year out from that so we're going to get another announcement at some point for what the cap's going to go up to next year uh, and then of course you know from there McDavid's contract will kick in the year after so you're looking at you know essentially two years out before it's effective right uh, dry saddle obviously has the current year his uh, 14 million bucks kicks in next year so you're kind of projecting where the salary cap is going to go um, and looking at the numbers for dry saddle at 14 million Sir Valley wonders if the salary cap was around a hundred million dollars because the max you can get is 20 percent he thinks that he should be able to get around 20 million now should he be able to get 20 million? You can make an argument that he should, being the best player actively, I think, in the world at the present time. But that's realistically probably not going to happen. And I'm not sure the salary cap is going to be $100 million. I think if you get at least a 5% increase, which is what's mandated, it can be more. Uh, but it requires a negotiation between the league and the union. Um, I would think that in two years' time, to be honest, I know this might sound like a play on numbers here but i think that the cap's more likely going to be around 97 million um so i think that's probably going to put him somewhere around that 16 16 5 range hey, can you imagine though if mcdavid was a, on the open market as a ufa at that time he probably some team probably would offer him 20 million so i mean uh, I don't know what he's going to end up signing for and i know with leon's contract extension being announced yesterday at 14 million that is a bargain. You tell me what Leon would get as a UFA if he wouldn't have signed and he hit the open market. I guarantee there would have been a team offering 15, 16 million for sure. No doubt about it. I mean, unfortunately, that's what happens in free agency. Uh, look at John Tavares, prime example, got $11 million from the Leafs. Good player. Has he ever been an $11 million player? I don't. I don't personally don't think he has. I mean, he's a he's a great player. Don't get me wrong. I really like his his game. I have a lot of respect for Johnny Tavares, but he's never been an eleven million dollar guy. He like 
and I don't care that other teams were offering more than the Leafs in free agency. That just goes to show you how silly of a season that is. Uh, so I guarantee somebody would have offered Leon way more than the 14, and then McDavid probably would get close to 20, if or, well, toward the 20% at least. So we'll see where it goes, but some interesting thoughts on where McDavid's contract might be heading. Now, one big rumor that came out today, this is, again, from a, a group that, you know, sometimes it's interesting to hear what they have to say, but it's always not always the case or it seems to be accurate but uh the rumor boys is that they call themselves sometimes on spit and chiclet so this comes from ryan whitney uh whitney claims he has sources in the bruins organization which i honestly wouldn't doubt that he does from the boston area i'm sure he's got connections hard to say how good and accurate they are but according to what they were saying on their latest podcast was that the last offer from the bruins to swayman was four years at 6.2 million and he also went on to say that the Bruins haven't actively engaged Swayman's camp in negotiations in three weeks. They've been kind of leaving them hanging. That, to me, is major disrespect and is certainly not going to help matters at all to get a deal done. Like I've said on numerous occasions, I am shocked that they didn't push to get a deal done with him before they traded Linus Ulmark. Um, You know, we've heard speculation that Swayman was looking for $10 million. I don't know that he really would demand and insist on getting 10, but I do think it's fair to say that he's going to want something near that. I think, like Whitney had mentioned, the McAvoy contract being something like in that range. That, to me, I would not be surprised if that's what Swayman is looking for. Um, you know, but there was some speculation from other sources recently that the Bruins were, you know, They'd love to do a long-term deal, but the money just right now doesn't seem to be adding up, that it might be more likely that they try to bridge him and do something shorter term and make him a UFA, you know, in his late 20s. You know, and a four-year deal might be something that they'd look at. I didn't think the, although the AAV that was mentioned, to get it done was nowhere near 6.2. It was probably more like, you know, probably not at least 7.5 to 8 range. Uh, So this goes to show you, if there's any a little bit of accuracy to this they are way off on a deal we're now like under two weeks away from training camp it just doesn't seem promising and if the lack of talks is not encouraging either it just really makes you wonder uh where things are at obviously you know he's an extremely important piece and if for some reason he's not there at the beginning of the season though that's going to have a major, major impact on the Boston Bruins. So I'll be curious to see where things go. Um, like I said, I, I kind of take what they say on that show with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm not, you know, claiming this to be the gospel or anything like that. But I do wonder, you know, because I've, I've seen rumblings from other reporters in the last week. Kind of, I didn't, not the 6.2 part, but the other stuff. So we will see where things go. I'd be curious to see um, if they're on to something here or not. Now, Sidney Crosby, still not signed, still driving interest from lots of reporters and writers. Again, this is a a scenario where uh, Travis Yost of TSN put out an interesting article, and it's just a what-if scenario. But I wanted to take a look at it, and I wanted to discuss it. Um, This is not a rumor from him saying he's got sources saying that Crosby's going to be traded. That's not where we're going. But the fact is, Crosby does not have a contract beyond the current season. That's a fact. Okay, we're not spreading a rumor that Crosby's not signed. That is absolute truth. Okay, we know that. That's a fact. So, we don't know what's holding up a Crosby extension. There's been numerous reports from Pittsburgh media throughout the entire summer. And there's been times where they thought they knew what was going on. And there's been a lot of times where they're like, yeah, you know what? Don't know. You know, you think you get it figured out and you don't. So, what's going on with Sid and the penguins we don't know it's just that simple so yost played kind of devil's advocate saying well what if what if crosby decides that he wants to wait okay a lot of people don't think the penguins are going to have the great of a season a lot of people don't think that the penguins are going to be a playoff team this year so if we get into the second half of the year and we're starting to get within, you know, four to six weeks of the NHL trade deadline, if he's not signed and they're certainly looking like they're not going to be a playoff team, 
the rumor mill is going to be going wild with Crosby talk around, well, could he actually be traded? Now, of course, he's got all the trade protection he needs. So if Crosby does go anywhere, it's going to be because Sid decides he wants to, and Sid will call his shot, which unfortunately is probably going to diminish the return of any potential Crosby deal to the Penguins. But this article by Travis Yost also mentions the idea of the fact that Crosby might be at the the only time in his career this could be a unique scenario where as much as he's loyal to the penguins that his competitive side might really want to chase another stanley cup and if it's not going to happen in pittsburgh maybe he takes a deadline day trade to finish out with another team make a run at it see if he can win another cup but then re-sign in pittsburgh in the summer do a one last contract for whatever number of years he thinks he wants to play you know two three four whatever it is sign that and then retire a penguin so that's the kind of the premise of the article now the to me the that itself and he acknowledges in the article that it's not a super high probability that this is going to happen and the odds are low he's just playing what if this is more for entertainment purposes than anything else but the team that he mentions as being the best fit the team that could benefit the most is the montreal canadians that's the part that i found Shocking. Now, he also mentions, uh, I can think, four other teams that Crosby would make them like an instant contender and make them that much more likely to have a shot at winning, like the top three teams in the Central. He mentions the Winnipeg Jets, the Dallas Stars, and the Colorado Avalanche. Also mentions you can never rule out Vegas, and that is the truth. You can never rule out Vegas. Now, out of all those teams, the main one that jumps out at me is Colorado, given his close friendship with Nate McKinnon. Uh, you know, a couple of Cole Harbor kids. Um, you know, obviously, Crosby's a bit older. He was McKinnon's hero and idol for a while, and then they became friends. And, you know, they've done all these Tim Horton commercials together, and they've really developed quite a bond and relationship over the years. They train together every summer with a, a good group of NHLers that are from the East Coast in the Halifax area. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite a thing. So for Crosby to team up with McKinnon, that to me would not be shocking. But in Montreal's case, um, why would they want a rental player? Now, a lot of people acknowledge that, and I, and I will give them credit, Ken Hughes did a lot of good things for Montreal this offseason. But a lot of those moves are with young players, drafting young dudes that are going to be more impactful in a couple years' time. Like Ivan Demonov, terrific pick. They did not screw that up. They took the right guy. But he's not even in the NHL this year. So you get, then you got to give him a couple you know, years to, to come. And, you know, you're probably looking at two, three years before he's making that impact that you think he will, right? Um, Patrick Laine got traded to Montreal this offseason. You know, the last few years has been down for him. Is he going to bounce back and be a 40-goal guy this year? A lot of people would love to see it. I'm sure Habs fans and Habs management would love to see it. But that, that might be too much to ask. You know, there's lots of things that they did that are good. But it's just hard to imagine that they're going to jump into a spot where they're, you know, like a, a definite playoff team where they want to make an addition. Like, can you imagine? But he does acknowledge the fact that, you know, Montreal's, you know, lack of experience down the middle. Like, if you could get a guy like Crosby, and you imagine that pushes Suzuki down to being your number two center, that just makes you that much better of a team. Maybe at that point, you know, maybe you make some other moves. Maybe Doc is like your 3C at that point. You know, new hooks going on the wing. Like, you know, there's lots of other options there. They could be a deeper team and maybe even have a shot at doing some damage. Who knows? But for them to add, it means they have to be heading the playoffs. Does anybody here, I know Habs fans will probably be more optimistic than, than most, but I don't know that it's reasonable to expect playoffs for Montreal this year. Like I said, they did a lot of good things. I think Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon are doing a bang-up job there, but I think we're still a little bit away from that being a real realistic possibility. So as much as this article is fun in a sense because Crosby going to Montreal, you know, we know Montreal had drafted his dad. Of course, his dad never played. I believe he grew up a Hams fan because of that. I think there's pictures of him in Hams jerseys and all that. So there's all that nostalgia, all that long, you know, drawn-out connection. It's a fun thing to talk about. Is it realistic? Not overly, but it couldn't happen. Hey, anything could happen at this point. You know, look at the, some of the trades we've seen in the past. But at the same time, like I said, for Montreal to make this move, they have to be, you know, going to playoffs. And not only going to playoffs, but think they have a shot. Otherwise, why do you make the trade and give up assets? Like, it just doesn't make sense, right? 
Like, to me, Colorado makes the most sense. If for some reason Sidney Crosby does not sign a contract and goes into the season unsigned, you like I said, you know that the longer it goes, the more it's going to get the rumors going. And at that point, you got to think, well, what if? Right? What if? And to me, the Avalanche, the Avalanche have to be the, the team that I say makes the most sense. But according to Yost, it's Montreal. I'd love to know what you think. I'll link the article down in the pinned comment. You can read through it yourself. Uh, like I said, for entertainment purposes only, because really we know this is not a very likely scenario. But it's uh, you know an interesting topic here for early September before we get into training camp. Since, like I said, it is a fact that he's unsigned. And we don't know what's going on. So it gives us something to kind of chew on while we're waiting to find out. Let me know your thoughts on all of today's news and rumors. And we'll talk about it further in the comments. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.